City Field in Flushing as the fans make their way into the Jackie Robinson Rotunda. It's the Red Sox and the Mets in Game 2 of the series. Welcome to the Broadcast Booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, as always joined by Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. An extra inning victory here last night for the Red Sox, trying to make it two in a row. Today we've got a pretty good pitching matchup. Yeah, we do. And, you know, a couple of months ago you would not have said that because Joe Kelly was not pitching well, but he is certainly turning the season around with five straight wins recently for Joe Kelly. And you see the numbers of 5-0 and with a 3.0. 3 ERA in those last five starts. On the other side, Jacob DeGrom has been absolutely incredible here at home. His numbers at home in 12 starts, 6 and 2, with a 1.46 ERA. And a lot of people around the Mets feel that he is the very best starting pitcher the Mets have. So it's going to be an interesting matchup for this afternoon here at City Field. A Kelly whose guy has turned his season around into Grum, who just doesn't lose here at City Field. Well, it is a beautiful day here in Flushing. The Red Sox and the Mets are coming your way next. Red Sox trying to make it two in a row. We're back with the first pitch right after this. Your low fare now at southwest.com. A beautiful day today in Flushing, New York, as the Red Sox and Mets play game two of a three game series. As the Red Sox in extra frames last night beating the Mets and the Red Sox today with Joe Kelly on the mound. And uh, certainly last night, a tough night for the Red Sox bullpen as it turned out. A lot of walks overall for Red Sox pitching in the game, but they did come away with the win in yeah, game one. I agree, Don. It was an actually a very ugly win for the Red Sox last night, but it was a win. You know, there were three runs that came across that really had no business coming across against them last night. The bullpen was a, a complete disaster for them last night, but somehow they were out of, able to walk out of uh, City field with a win last night, and uh, that's incredible. David Ortiz getting a home run, Jackie Bradley Jr. getting a home run. So uh, we'll see what's up today with the, the Red Sox. Hopefully they play a little bit better and still get the win. You know, the Mets right now, as we take a look at the East situation in the National League, they have a six and a half game lead over the Nationals, even with the loss here last night. They keep that six and a half game lead, and uh, they have had a terrific season. And with Jacob DeGrom going to the mound here today, their best pitcher, according to the Mets people, uh, that we have seen this season as the Mets will be looking to him and hoping he can go deep into the game because they've had their own problems with their bullpen lately. Yeah, and, and when you look at DeGrom working in the ball game today, I mean, uh, last time out got knocked out earlier, no decision, two and two-thirds gave up eight hits and six earned runs. So 
You know, and we gave you that graphic uh, in the open about him at home. He's been absolutely incredible here. And as I said in the open, most of the people around the Mets think he's the best pitcher they have on the staff. And the Red Sox today, of course, going with Joe Kelly, who's been very good lately. And Joe Kelly hoping to keep that run going here. They're expecting another huge crowd on hand here today, as we had last night as well. Uh, David Ortiz out of the lineup today is uh, he is probably his heel has reoccurred so they keep him out of the lineup for the Red Sox. So that actually means that David now has missed three of the last four games as it turns out is now heading onto the field are the New York Mets this afternoon. As they do let's check out the visiting Red Sox starting lineup. It's brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. Mookie Betts is in center field. He's leading it off with Pablo Sandoval at third base batting second. Xander Bogarts at shortstop with Travis Shaw at first base in the cleanup spot. Brock Holt at second base. Blake Swihart in the lineup today. A late addition. Jackie Bradley Jr. in right field bat seventh. Alejandro De Yaza in right field actually actually in left field for the Red Sox today. And it is Joe Kelly who is doing the pitching and batting ninth. And that starting pitcher presented by New England Nissan dealers Jacob DeGrom on the mound as he gets ready for his 25th start 12 and 6 with a 2.29 earned run average 161 strikeouts 32 walks and opponents hitting at 205 against DeGrom. Last Monday a no decision against the Philadelphia Phillies ended up going just two and two thirds giving a total of seven runs six earned. The Mets defense is brought to you by DraftKings, and they are seventh in the National League with 71 errors on the season. Juan Uribe will be at third base. Wilma Flores, the shortstop. Kelly Johnson at second, and Daniel Murphy, the first baseman. Left to right, Michael Conforto, Joanna Cespedes, and Curtis Grandison, and Travis Darno doing the catching for the Grom. Now the umpire and crew today. John Tempani has a play call on the balls and strikes with Joe West at first base, Bill Welke at second base, and the crew chief, John Hirschbeck, who had the plate last night. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas tardes, amigos. A beautiful day here today in New York, 85 degrees. The breeze out to center at 7 miles per hour, and the forecast partly cloudy right now. Fair amount of blue skies above, lots of sunshine. And DeGrom getting ready for this outing here today against the Mets as Mookie Betts will be getting ready to lead it off. Red Sox have won two straight coming into this and three of their last four in the midst of a seven day, six game road trip that, of course, began in Chicago as we look at the arsenal for DeGrom. Yeah, the fastball very powerful. You had a lot of power arms on this uh, Mets staff. You see the breaking ball at 26%, 11% changeups. But you'll see a lot of fastballs today from DeGrom. And Mookie Betts ready to lead it off here for the Red Sox. Doing a 272 average with 11 homers and 59 runs batted in. That's one for five in the ball game last night with a double. First pitch of the ball game is in there for strike one and we're underway. That first fastball 96 miles an hour with a little movement on it. Didn't miss by much, and it evens up at one and one. And Betts has enjoyed interleague play, hitting a 299 this year in interleague play. 493 slugging percentage. <laughs> Jerry, you highlighted DeGrom's success at home. The road's not been the same, but the uh, home has been amazing here. Very comfortable on this mound as a couple hops out to Johnson at second base for the first out of the ball game. Yeah, it's hard to figure, you know, when guys have numbers like the splits like that home and away. I mean, it, I don't get it. When you can pitch, you can pitch anywhere, and this guy surely has the ability to pitch anywhere in the uh, in the league. And look at where he ranks fourth in ERA coming in with a 2.29, or an average just a 2.05. And trying to bounce back after a difficult outing against the Philadelphia Phillies. He's got one out here in the first inning, and Pablo Sandoval now standing in. Pablo, who had been ejected from last night's game, arguing with John Hirschbeck, the home plate umpire. Sandoval, the only guy in the lineup today that has faced DeGrom in the past. One for three against him. 
Tardy on the 97 mile an hour fastball and it's 0 and 2. He's been 96 97 out of the gate today and he blows away Sandoval the 97 mile an hour fastball first strike out of the day for DeGrom. I was checking out his strikeouts on the season a strikeout high as 11 he did that against the St. Louis Cardinals picks up his first on the fastball right there to Pablo Sandoval. That's a cross seam fastball the straight one an inside part of the plate. Two down here in the first inning for Xander Bogarts. Take his time to get settled in here, trying to break up the rhythm of DeGrom. And he picks up that outside corner at 98. Xander, two for five in the ball game last night with an RBI. Now has a nine game hitting streak coming in. That's the hard curveball right there at 81 miles an hour. So, so far, we've seen the fastball and curveball. There's also a changeup in the mix. Bogarts gets a piece and stays alive. Seen a lot of fastball so far in this one. Xander going 13 for 37 during the nine game hitting streak. One two pitch again. And a breaking ball this time that is fouled off down the third baseline. In the air to right field. Curtis Granderson is over and under. He'll put it away. It's a one, two, three first inning for DeGrom. The Mets are coming up. As we check out the New York Mets starting lineup, it is brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Curtis Granderson leading it off in right field with Jonas Cespedes in center. Daniel Murphy at first base, bats third with Travis Darno doing the catching. Kelly Johnson at second base. Juan Uribe, the veteran, at third base. Michael Conforto is in left field with Wilmer Flores at shortstop. And Jacob DeGrum does the pitching in bats ninth. Standing in to lead it off, a former Yankee and Detroit Tiger, Curtis Granderson standing in and 
First pitch from Joe Kelly of the day he is in there for strike one. And the Red Sox starting pitcher presented by your local New England Audi dealers. 22nd start for Kelly, 7 and 6, 5.18 ERA. Certainly been much better lately. In the month of August has been terrific. Last time out, a win against the White Sox in 7 and a third, 5 hits, 2 runs. Won his last five straight decisions. I think Don, one of the reasons Kel Kelly has been better, the fact that he's been using his off speed pitches more than he did earlier in the season. Uh, he was certainly heavy fastball early in the year, and it's a good one. It's 97, 98 miles an hour, but a little bit out of control. He's taken some miles per hour off that fastball, and it has helped his control. Missing that time to even the count of two and two. Still throws a lot of fastball, 68% of the time. Yeah, but that 22% and 10% has certainly come up over the last five starts. Granderson to right. Bradley Jr. going back, going to be quickly over his head and one off the wall. Granderson heading for second base, and he'll get there standing with a leadoff double in the bottom of the first inning. Looks like a change up that time from Joe Kelly and instead of getting it down and away it stays down and in and that becomes a very hittable pitch for a left handed hitter. Granison on the line one hops the uh, fence and easily gets into second base with the leadoff double. So Granderson at second base and it brings up you Cespedes. I'm a Red Sox outfielder who today gets to start in center field. Juan Lagares getting the beginning of the game off. 292, eight homers, and 23 runs batted in for Cespedes. Sixty-three extra base hits. That's good for fourth in the majors right now. Expressed very early on in his Mets tenure with Terry Collins. Want to play every day, didn't care where it was, left, center, or right. And last night we saw him in left. Today we see him in center. And right now, down 0 and 2 in the count. Assessment since coming over to the Mets, eight home runs and 23 RBI. So it's been a, a good move offensively and defensively for the New York Mets. Three four doubles tied for fifth most in the majors. Down on the count 0 and 2. That's generally what they try to do elevate when they get ahead of sets but to see if it'll chase that high fastball. This ball right close to the top of the strike zone but did not call the strike. You can see Swihart, the catcher, getting up in his crouch. He wanted it upstairs. Incidentally, Swihart, a late addition as Hannigan was scratched due to a right calf tightness just prior to the ball game. And Joe Kelly wanted that pitch. That was a good pitch. Running right the outside corner, not called a strike. He's had a couple that he thought could have been called a strike. Yep. Again, it's in the presentation. You saw the catcher have to reach back across his body, and sometimes that will not go your way. Swings at the 2 2 and fouls it off over by the Red Sox dugout. And Joe Kelly 1 0, the 2.08 ERA. And three games, one start against the Mets. All those starts coming as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Hannigan had caught his last four starts of this five game winning run for Joe Kelly. So maybe some adjustments today working again with Swihart. Fly ball headed out towards right center field. On the move is Betts. And he has Bradley step in front of him to make the catch, tagging up and getting to third without a problem is Granderson. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are 13th in the American League with 78 errors on the season. 
Pablo Sandoval will be at third base. Xander Bogas, the shortstop. Brock Holt at second. Travis Shaw, the first baseman. Left to right, Alejandro De Aza, Mookie Betts, and Jackie Bradley Jr. And Blake Swihart doing the catching for Joe Kelly. One down, Granderson 90 feet away. And it brings up Daniel Murphy. And she in last night's game starts today. And at first base at 286 with 10 homers and 56 runs batted in. It's the arms out of the way, but it grabs the corner. I got to tell you, even though it's the first inning in this ball game with one out, I pull the infield in. I know it sounds crazy, but you're pitching against a guy that pitches very well here at home, and why give him a gift run? On the strike now to Murphy. Outfield set up straight away here on Murphy. Same spot. Murphy doesn't like either one of them, but he's down one and two now. Good to see fastball right there at 97 miles an hour. You can see that ball coming back just a little bit to the inside corner and knee high. Trying to go back there again, a little lower this time. On deck is Travis Darno, the catcher in the cleanup spot today for the Mets. Joe Kelly coming in at seven and six with a 5.18 ERA, 22nd start of the year for the right-hander. A foul at the plate. And staying alive here is Murphy. So I are going to head out here and talk to Joe Kelly. It'll be interesting to watch today. And you brought up the point about Hannigan catching all his starts. You know, recently, how many times Kelly has to shake off Swihart the, before they get on the same page? Yeah, it seems as if they have reached a real comfort zone over the last starts, and uh, the results certainly there. Yeah, Hannigan uh, making it a point to call more breaking balls, curveballs, changeups. To go along with that good fastball like Kelly has. Some calf tightness has him on the bench today. Two two pitch. Close but called the ball full count. Trying that two seamer again but doesn't come back enough this time. Granderson at third base, one down here in the Mets' first inning. Oh, foul ball again. So you'll see an eight pitch of this at bat. Granderson started the inning with a double to right quickly over the head of Jackie Bradley Jr. Cespedes has flied out to Bradley in right. Now Daniel Murphy entwined here in a battle with Joe Kelly. Murphy lines it foul. Hot shot beyond the Mets dugout. Beautiful day in Flushing, New York, and a big crowd on hand here today. Bigger than last night, no doubt. Red Sox here for the first time since they opened this place in 2009. Red Sox game in an exhibition game here, the Inner Spring Training. First time they've been in this field in the regular season as Murphy strikes out and Kelly wins the battle with his first K of the day and he wins the battle with a changeup after a lot of fastballs they go back to the off speed pitch and that completely fooled 
Daniel Murphy. Again, that ball is supposed to be on the outside part of the plate, stays inside, but because it was off speed, still fools Murphy. Meek Insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Two down here in the first inning with Granderson at third base and Kelly now going after Travis Darno, the catcher. Two seventy nine average to start the day for Darno. Nine homers and thirty runs batted in. He's at a two sixty three in the month of August. Himself a six game hitting streak coming into today's action. Spent time on the DL. Activated at the end of July, the 31st, after he had rehabbed his left elbow strain. It's time for home plate umpire John Tampani. Joe Kelly's had three pitches in this inning that could have been strikes that have not been called strikes. Darno taking and he takes strike one at 97. A double to begin the inning. Cespedes with a fly out to right. The gut Granderson to third base. Big strike out of Daniel Murphy. Now Kelly falling behind three and one. And he loses him. First walk allowed by Joe Kelly. And it's first and third now for the Mets. Well, next week the Yankees are coming to town for their final series at Fenway Park. Seats available for all three games. Get your tickets now at RedSox.com. First and third, two down here in the first inning, and it brings up Kelly Johnson. Two fifty-nine with twelve homers and forty runs batted in. He starts off behind. Johnson coming from Atlanta along with Juan Uribe, July the 24th. A couple of minor league right handed pitchers going the other way. He's a swing and a miss there. Makes it one and one. Best change up so far. I know he got a strike out on one but this is where he wanted it down and away. And that's exactly where he gets it in the off balance swing by Kelly Johnson. Off balance swing there and Johnson down one and two and doubled up on the change up. Pitches two and three, both change ups. And again, good late movement on that change up going down and away. Two and two. Joe Kelly having to throw a lot of pitches in this first inning. It's been a battle, but to this point, he is unscathed. Granderson at third base, Darno at first base with two away. Pitch 30 of this first inning. And a swing and a miss as Kelly strikes out Johnson and the Mets strand a pair. Scoreless after one.
It's Scion TC. Which of these is the most exciting play in baseball? Text one for suicide squeeze. Two for triple play. Sox three for inside the park home run. Sox four for the steal of home. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates may apply. What message per vote? Visit Nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions as well as privacy policy. I think I know the answer to yours, Jerry. You love the suicide squeeze. Yeah, but... I also like uh, the inside the park home run because uh-huh. you just don't see that very often. There's a pop up. Foul ground off the bat of Travis Shaw, but not playable as Darno coming back. Not every day, Jerry, do you see it from a catcher. As we did last night on this inside the park home run, it may have actually been a more conventional home run had they taken a second look at it where it came off that wall, but. Stands as an inside the park home run for Blake Swihart. And so those are those are the ones that always catch you by surprise. The inside the park home run. Steal the home as they're voting for right now is also very exciting. Yep. A triple play is confusing. It really is when you're announcing. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> very the question. Com- it's confusing when you're playing. I just keep tagging people. Yeah, you just, <laughs> just get as many outs as you possibly can. When they tell you there's three, you go off the field. <laughs> and Travis Shaw leading it off and taking a pitch downstairs. It evens a count of two and two. Rio 5, seven homers, 16 runs batted in for the Red Sox first baseman. We saw David Ortiz start at first last night, and Shaw. An off balance cut becomes the second strikeout victim for DeGrom. Now, change ups are in vogue. DeGrom right now with a, a change up uh, for the strikeout, and it was four straight uh, change ups for Kelly to get the strikeout against Kelly Johnson. So, one out here in the second, and it brings up Brock Holt. Two eighty four to start the day. And Sox super utility man who has been doing the bulk of his work at second base in the absence of Dustin Pedroia. I watched uh, Pedroia today Jerry go through a series of exercises and running in the outfield today. It looks like he's getting closer and closer. Yeah he's feeling much much better. You can tell by his personality. He was on that morning bus just chirping away this morning. <laughs> so he's uh, you know he's getting close. You know it drives him nuts to sit on that bench and not be able to play. We see how many times he's come back on the early side, and this time it seemed to set him back a little bit. So this time, making sure that he is 100 percent, would very much like to play some more before the end of the year. Make sure that he is good to go for the off season into his normal off season regimen. No two pitch coming up here to Brock Holt. For four in the ball game last night was Holt, and so far on this trip that started in Chicago, he's two for 11. Sprays it foul off to the left out of play. They marking the 129th game of the year for Boston. Play day baseball here again tomorrow for the Red Sox head home. Thought about it, but didn't pull the trigger, and it's two and two. He's enjoyed interleague play as well. 364 average against National League foes. Ninety-six, but too high. Who has started at second base, third base, right field, shortstop, left field, first base, center field. And a strikeout victim here in the second inning. Back to back K's for DeGrom. And back to back strikeouts on changeups. They see that changeup grip, the rotation on the baseball, and uh, the last two strikeouts to Shore and Holt, two left handers on the changeup. 
Two down, five in a row, three by way of the K for DeGrom. And here is Blake Swihart. Swihart with the inside the park home run here last night. Second home run of the year. Thirtieth pitch for Degrom, and that is going to miss. Check of the sign pole right now. The steal of home plate still leading. One foul back to the screen. I believe the last straight steal of home that I can remember was Jacoby Ellsbury. That uh, might Sox. have been. Was that against the Yankees? I think it was on a Sunday night. Yeah. First inside the park home run by a Red Sox catcher. You remember Hal Wagner? Hal oh, was a great That's guy. <laughs> two two pitches, a swing and a miss. How about that inning for Degrom? He strikes out the side in succession. Bottom of the second inning, a scoreless contest. Attention to England, Deadhead, steal your base at Fenway Park for Grateful Dead Night on September 21st. Limited tickets available at redsoxcom Grateful Dead. Last of the second, and it's Juan Uribe who came into the game late last night. It's a start at third base here today. Uribe coming over from the Atlanta Braves. Followed by Conforto and Flores in the inning. And here's a line drive base hit taken to the other way into right field. Now Uribe gets a breaking ball this time. A curveball that stays flat, stays up in the zone. And uh, Uribe taking it to the opposite field for the base hit. So he is now three for nine in his career against Joe Kelly. David Wright getting the day off, at least uh, the beginning of the ball game. You rebate getting the start at third. Michael Conforto, the batter, the left fielder, with the runner at first, and nobody out here in the second. And he yanked that down and in. 273 with three homers and 13 runs batted in for Conforto.
That was his first major league home run back on August 3rd at Miami. Center fielder Mookie Betts over towards right center. Good size gap out there in left center field here on Conforto. As the shadows start to encompass the home plate area, the mound in the sunshine right now. Light tower in behind Joe Kelly. You see the shadows across the infield. Late day baseball from Flushing, New York. High strike call. Right at the top of the strike zone on the 2 0 count from Kelly. Three and one. Second straight inning that the Mets have led off with a hit. Granderson doubled to begin the first inning, could not score. Juan Uribe has greeted Kelly here in the second inning with a base hit to right to get it started. Joe Kelly had to throw 30 first inning pitches. Full count now. Well, Uribe might be off at first base here on the uh, 3 2 count. He is indeed and a ground ball to second base Holt was going to go to second but it goes to first for the shore out as they started Uribe at first base and it keeps him out of a double play. Yeah the ball was hit hot enough for at least Brock Holt had a chance to think about going to second base but because they were off with the pitch no chance to get Uribe even though he has to jump to get out of the way of the baseball as Holt looking there but didn't want to make the throw just in case gets the shore out at first base. So Uribe at second, one down. Wilmer Flores, the batter. A shortstop checking in at 266 with 14 homers and 54 runs batted in. And the Mets have a runner in scoring position. In the month of August, hitting at 347. In there for a strike. We talked about it last night, but really his numbers have turned around dramatically, coinciding with what he thought was a trade and the trade deadline that didn't go down. Ends up staying with the Mets. But actually crying on the field and in the dugout upon hearing the news that he had been traded, but didn't happen. He has gone on to have a terrific August here in New York. Close pitch, but called the ball. Two strikeouts. One runs up and in at 96, and it evens at two and two. Four is hitting at 526 with runners in scoring position this month. Ten for 19. And he bats here with Uribe at second base and one down. Chopped up the middle as Holt around the bag. We'll get the throw in time to first base for the second out as Uribe takes third with now two down. We'll see Dennis Leary, Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Wright, and more at the 21st Annual Comics Come Home at the TD Garden on Saturday, November the 7th. Proceeds benefit the Cam Neely Foundation for Cancer Care. For tickets, visit Ticketmaster.com.
Now Brock Holt right there had to navigate the second base bag to make that play in the ground ball because it looked like for a second the ball was going to hit the bag and bounce up. Two down for DeGrom. Batting out of the number nine spot is the Mets pitcher. Here's Brock Holt. That last ground ball. Look how close he is to that bag and how much that ball ju just missed hitting the second base bag. On the ground left side Sandoval cuts it off throws off balance and in plenty of time to get to Grom. second straight inning the Mets have left a runner at third we're scoreless through two. Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. It'll be tennis there starting on Monday right across the street here from City Field. But right now, Jacob DeGrom back on the mound for the third inning. Had a great second inning, striking out the side and using his changeup. It was uh, sure first on a changeup, and then a changeup to Brock Holt. And then he goes back to the fastball for the strikeout against Swihart up and away. So four in the day. Three of them, a two of them on fastballs, one on a changeup. Jackie Bradley Jr. leading it off and taking strike one. Yeah, to kind of kick off those ceremonies about tennis, John McEnroe threw out the first today, first pitch today, and threw an absolute rocket in the home plate. Bradley Jr., Alejandro de Aza, Joe Kelly expected here in the Boston third inning. Well, JBJ with a home run here in last night's game. Two run shot that gave the Red Sox a 3 2 lead at the time. Down to first, and he slipped coming out of the box, so no problem for Murphy to tag the bag. I'm not sure what to Bradley did there. Looked up, and he was having trouble getting out of the box. At first, when I looked down, I thought maybe the ball had hit Bradley, but it didn't. He just slipped, tops it down that first base line, no contact with his foot, and right there in the uh, right in front of the catcher, where it's wet, is where he slips and goes down. It's interesting how they leave the batter's box dry itself, but what everything around it. 
see a lot of places where they really wet down the front of the area in front of home plate in some places. Much of the reason for that is so if the ball hits in front of home plate, you don't get those big high bounces. Slows it up. The guy who has seen his playing time minimize is Alejandro De Azu with the rotation in the outfield that for the most part he's been left out of. Handler Ramirez, Ruzne Castillo, Jackie Bradley Jr., Mookie Betts. It was a time there where De Azu was playing every day. Down the line, but guarding the line was Murphy. DeGrom covers. And they're two away. Nice play by Daniel Murphy. We didn't see him in the game last night with the exception of a pinch hitting roll. And here uh, in very good position, he goes right to the line and takes extra bases away from Deaza. Momentum going toward the pitcher with the underhand flip. Very well done. Two down here in the third inning, and it'll bring up Joe Kelly. Kelly one for two at the plate this year. Of course, she used to hitting when he was a member of the Cardinals and he fouls it back to the screen for strike one. DraftKings.com is paying out over $300 million this baseball season. DraftKings has given out $34 million to Boston residents alone since the site launched. Get your free entry into a one day fantasy baseball contest today using promo code Nesson. Two outs in the third, eight in a row retired by. Jacob DeGrom here. And very good start for the Mets right hander. Help. Jumps ahead of Kelly one and two. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Kelly. That's five strikeouts for DeGrom. We're through two and a half from City Field without a score. Let's send it down to Garen Austin. Thanks, Don. Last night was another strong outing for Henry Owens. Interim manager Tori Lavello said they are monitoring his outings and that they have discussed the possibility of giving him a day off in between starts. Now, they've also discussed the possibility of a six man rotation going forward. Don. Hey, Garen, thanks very much. As the Red Sox try to map out the remainder of this season with the arms that they have and 
Also protecting some of the guys who are not used to pitching this deep into the season. I think that's the big thing, Don, is, is the fact that you know you get a, a lot of young kids that, that, that have not pitched into the month of September, and you don't want to overuse them uh, throughout the course of a season, especially being young. You're kind of getting their feet wet to, at the major league level for that extra month of the year. We're also seeing that with some of the older guys in some cases. Janichi Tazawa jumps out of the guy who right now appears to be laboring after what we saw last night. Another one is a gondo. Yes. A lot of use. Granderson pops it a foul. And out of play. As Oji Uihara lost for the year. Really changed the complexion of the Red Sox back into the bullpen in a hurry. And they have not been able to effectively close games out. 1 1 to Granderson. And a liner to center field that's going to get in for a base hit in front of Betts. Granderson 2 for 2 on the day. Now the Mets don't run much, but Granderson is a guy that will run. He has 11 steals on the season, caught four times. Makes that outside fastball and hooks it up the middle for the base hit. Drops it in front of Mookie Betts. So he's been on twice today. Double and now a single. Granderson, or I should say, Kelly really making it tough on himself. It is three straight innings in which the lead runner is on for the Mets. He's had to work his way around the first two after Granderson doubled in the first. Uribe singled in the second, and now Granderson again here with a base hit in the third. Here is Cespedes. First to check on Granderson, diving back. Good size lead over at first for Granderson. He Noticing first, is Kelly. When he first came into the big leagues, Don, I never expected him to be a power hitter. We thought he'd be a speed guy that slapped the ball around, and well, he turned himself into a big time power hitter at the major league level. Especially as a member of the New York Yankees and that short porch in right field at Yankee Stadium that he liked so very much. To the tune of 41 home runs in 2011 and 2012, he had 43 round trippers. Last year, in his first year with the Mets, 20 home runs. And he surpassed that this year with 22. Granderson, a guy that got a lot of triples because of where he played for so many years. It was Comerica Park in Detroit, in that big yard. On a strike to Yonis Cespedes with nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning. Well, the first 5,000 fans who attend the Paw Sox Rochester game at McCoy Stadium on Friday, September the 4th, will receive a collector's edition Paw Sox baseball card set. It's always a popular item, so make sure you grab your tickets today at pawsox.com. Lead off base hit by Curtis Granderson to start this, the bottom of the third inning for the Mets. And we'll have three men on through the first two innings. As a ground ball up the middle, Holt will touch second and fire to first for a double play. Some fancy footwork turned in by Brock Holt around the bag at second, and he gets the double play. Yeah, Holt's been very busy at second base early in this ball game. Had to charge a ball that was near the bag to get it out. Now, same thing uh, right near the second base bag. Makes the adjustment, tagging the bag with his left foot and the throw to first base to grab the out. Big part there is getting yourself on balance somehow so you can make the throw. You know you're going to get the second base back, but can he complete the double play? And that time Brock Holt did. Two down here in the third, and it brings up Daniel Murphy on a pitch down and in. Strikeout victim in the first inning, one of two Ks for Joe Kelly, and they both came in that first inning. Now 
And a liner down the right field line foul. Hot shot, but a few feet to the right of the line. Fly ball left field. Deaza has got it in his sights and he puts it away to end the third inning. We head for the fourth without a score from Flushing. Things happen. Watch out. Good things are happening to local people at easternbank.com slash good things happen. And back in New York, but not to play the Yankees. Here to play the Mets. Seems strange. Red Sox and Mets into game two of a three game series and into the fourth inning. And a beautiful day today in New York as the top of the Red Sox order to lead it off. Mookie Betts, Pablo Sandoval, Xander Bogarts. What a difference coming here on a Saturday compared to Friday. I mean, yesterday it took at least 45 minutes to yeah. get here from downtown uh, Manhattan. Today, what, about 15 minutes? Yeah, the highways were a little clearer today. Well, that's grounded out to second base in the first inning. Jacob DeGrom has retired the first nine Boston hitters on the day. And floats a 96 mile an hour fastball in there. It's an easy 96, 97, 98 from DeGrom so far here today. And a ground ball to short to the back end goes Flores. High throw that goes over the first baseman, and he is going to apply a tag, but he never made the turn. So safe at first base is Betts. And an errant throw by Flores that just sailed on him. You could see this as soon as it left his hand and just took off on him. He had time to set up and plant too, but that, that was just a rise ball he threw to first base. And Mookie Betts did not make an effort to go to second. So even though they tag him, he's still going to be safe. If you make a move towards second base and you're tagged, you're going to be out. The air charge to Wilmer Flores on the throw. Bets at first base, held on over there by Murphy. And 
Here's Pablo Sandoval struck out swinging in the first inning. And takes a look at an outside corner strike at 95 miles an hour. Five strikeouts so far for DeGrom on the day. As he goes second time through the Red Sox order. H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox Foundation for its commitment to 4,900 accredited charities throughout New England. And Grom to me looks like a guy that he could very good jump on. Kicks that leg pretty high as he delivers the home plate. And the ball lays off. It's an even 50 pitches now for DeGrom. There are three plus innings. Fouled at the dish. One and two here to Sandoval. Ejected from last night's game. The home plate umpire last night, John Hirschbeck, ran him after he argued over fair or foul in front of the plate when he was tagged out. He thought it was a foul ball. And said something to Hirschbeck to get run from the game. That is eight game hitting streak come to an end here last night as a result. He's back to the bag again is Betts. Again, Sandoval batting in the two spot. That's the eighth time this year that he has batted in the two spot. Prior to this year, it only happened three times in his entire career. Or spent with the San Francisco Giants. Two two pitch. And a swing and a miss. Powered that one by him at 96 miles an hour. Strikeout number six for DeGrom. Second time. Sandoval is down by way of the K. An almost identical spot that he got him the first time. A fastball up and in. Two strikeouts on Sandoval, both of basically on the same pitch. A fastball up and in this afternoon. So one on one out and it brings up Xander Bogarts who flied out to the right fielder Curtis Granderson in the first inning. Bigger lead for Betts over at first base. As Bogarts takes another strike, bottom of the zone. Rome getting the low call that time, and it's 0 2. Yeah, very low, as a matter of fact. On the ground down the third baseline it is a fair ball and a throw dug out of first base by Murphy on to second goes Betts on your rebate charging in and wasn't entirely sure so threw it anyway and it ended up being a fair ball and an out at first base. That's a nice play by the first baseman da Daniel Murphy. There's your rebate going right over the bag of the, the fair balls uh, call is made and on the other end the pick by Murphy at first base. Actually becomes a fairly easy pick as the ball was close to the glove when it did bounce. So two down bets into scoring position. And Travis Shaw, the batter. Jumping on that first pitch he sees and fouls a 96 mile an hour fastball back. Shaw went looking in the second inning, 0 for 1.
Strike two. Six strikeouts for DeGrom on the day here through three and two thirds innings. Up and away for ball one. Trying the 0-2 change up there against Travis Shaw, but not even close. Lee, emergency swing, and it's fouled off to the left out of play. Well, right now he's ticket has super savings on all Red Sox tickets. Ticket start at just nine dollars, and New York Yankees tickets start at thirty-three. Supplies are limited. Visit aceticket.com right now for super savings. Two down. Mookie Betts at second base. Have a Shaw batting. Red Sox still do not have a hit on the day. And Shaw will foul another one back. You'll see a sixth pitch in this at bat. Base runner the Red Sox have had Mookie Betts reaching on the throwing error by Wilmer Flores to begin this, the top of the fourth inning. Sandoval then struck out. Bogart's grounded out to third, which advanced Betts to second base. Shaw strikes out, make it seven K's for DeGrom. Make it three and a half innings done without a score. Hundred dollars. Just text money to three six six nine eight. Message and data rates may apply. It's on to the bottom of the fourth inning. A scoreless contest so far from City Field. A lot of Red Sox nation here checking out City Field. First time the Red Sox have been here since 2009 when they were here for an exhibition game at the end of spring training. And a curveball from Joe Kelly for strike one. Travis Darno leading it off here for New York in the bottom of the fourth inning. Walked in the first, the only free pass served up by Kelly to this point of the game. On field straight away here on Darno. Be followed by Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe in the inning. He went around.
Kelly leaving the curveball way up in the zone and uh, of course when they leave breaking balls up in the zone like that they're very tempting for hitters but that pitch was so far up. And I know tried to check his swing but he couldn't. Fly ball to right field. Jackie Bradley Jr. had started back now, wanders in and takes care of out number one. But today's cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Joe Kelly is looking to become the first Red Sox pitcher to go 6 and 0 in August since Roger Clemens did so back in 1990. The last Boston hurler to do it in any month was Pedro Martinez in May of 1999. He's into the fourth inning with one out. And here is Kelly Johnson who takes strike one. Johnson struck out swinging in the first inning. It's not been a huge strikeout game so far for Joe Kelly. Had two K's. They both occurred in the first inning. The last couple of games have not been big strikeout games for him. Four last time out in seven and a third. Three the time before in six innings. Sharply hit but right at Bogarts. See down here in the fourth inning. So two way and that'll bring up Juan Uribe. Getting his second look at Joe Kelly today. Uribe with a base hit to right field in the second inning. One of three hits put together by the Mets. That's had their chance, especially early. First and third could not score. I don't know if you rebate at third base in the second what? inning. Two. Quickly, 0 and 2. Backs off, going back and forth here with Swihart, and they backed off the hill. In his last four starts, Ryan Hannigan was doing the catching. Hannigan with a little tightness in a calf. Pulled before the game as a ground ball way over his Shaw. He flips it to Kelly. Had to reach back to get it, but they're in plenty of time. Three to one on the putout. We head to the fifth without a score.
And in their 129th game, the Red Sox lost to the Angels 8-2. And, uh-huh. uh, Jerry, you had two hits and knocked in a run for the Angels that day. <laughs> so you were saying ha-ha at the time. That, uh, <laughs> it was the pitch of Louis. Louis Tia. Yeah. You wore out the 75 team, as it turns out. Yeah, I still think they got to win the pennant, though. Yeah, I, I like their chances. Well, Brock Holt struck out swinging in the second inning. DeGrom with seven strikeouts in the contest as the Red Sox come to bat in the top of the fifth inning. Four times this year, DeGrom has gotten into double figures in strikeouts. And his strikeout high in the season was 11 back on May the 21st here at City Field against the St. Louis Cardinals. The other three double digit strikeout totals he had 10 at Arizona, 10 at San Francisco, and 10 here against the Colorado Rockies. Full count now. Seven strikeouts so far today through the first four. He's got Shaw twice, Sandoval twice. Rock stays alive with a fall ball back to the screen. Never faced the Red Sox. He's had six career interleague starts. Three and two of the 2.70 ERA against the American League. And a ground ball up the middle into center field. A base hit for Brock Holt. First Red Sox hit of the day comes to begin the fifth inning. It certainly took a while, but Brock Holt takes the ground ball back up the middle. Fastball at 96, right down the heart of the plate. And a dive by Flores at shortstop, but he can't come up with it. The Red Sox finally have a, a base runner at first base. Via the hit. Lead runner on for the second time in this game for the Red Sox as Betts. Last inning reached on the error but was left at second base. Nick Schweighart fouling the first pitch back. He was a strikeout victim in the second. He went swinging. Strike two at the bottom of the zone. Well, the Mets as a team have won all five games that DeGrom has started this month. And a swing and a miss badly fooled and kind of changing his mind in the middle with Swihart who strikes out for the second time today. Yeah, it's almost like Swihart was expecting something inside on the 0-2 count. Instead he gets a fastball that's going to be off the outside part of the plate. You could see him leaking a little bit there with his front shoulder and that fastball goes away and he cannot check the swing. Runner at first, one down, eight strikeouts so far for DeGrom, and it brings up Jackie Bradley Jr. It's very tough to put plays on with a guy like uh, DeGrom on the mound. You know, he throws so hard, he gets so many strikeouts, not a lot of ground balls. So, it, you know, non contact pitches like this are hard to put plays on, hitting runs. Is, Stuff like that because uh, you just can't guarantee contact. The 
Aha. I didn't notice that the first time, Jerry. Those K signs are made out of combs. Excellent observation. Yeah, it took me a little while to see it. Swinging a foul tip that time for Bradley. And have something to do with his, his moss. Very long hair. Flowing moss. One, two. And the ball getting away and taking second base quickly, alertly, and aggressively. It was Brock Holt who broke right away. Was that a delay steal by Brock Holt? I thought he broke when it hit the dirt. Let's take a look. One, two. Now, as soon as it hit the dirt, you're right, Don. That's when he took off. He's he's the best on the Red Sox at doing that. The very best. Gets an excellent secondary lead. When he reads the ball in the dirt, he is off and going. Wild pitch charge to Degrom that gets hold to second base. And Bradley trying to hold up did not. Hirschbeck rings him up. Nine strikeouts for Degrom. This is some kind of impressive here today. Yeah, I, I see what the folks here in New York are talking about. I mean, it didn't take long. It took me one inning. This guy's something special. And it's not just power fastballs. He's shown a changeup. He's shown a breaking ball. Two down in the inning with Holt to its second base and Alejandro Diaz of the batter. Diaz are grounding out to first base in the third inning. He grounds one foul outside of first this time. And on the backswing may have gotten Darno. Kind of tapped him on the shoulder. Looked like an apology. One pitch straightens him up. I wonder about the timing of Diaz. We've talked about the lessened playing time for him and not having as much opportunities to have at bats over the last week or two. Yeah, and then to step in against a guy like this, not easy. It's hardy on that cut, 95 and by him. Oh, running away that time to the outside part of the plate, up, up in the zone. No contact by Deaza. Runner at second, two down, and a one-two pitch. Deaza able to hold up. He's very fortunate that was not called a strike. Another pitch that gets the top of the strike zone away from Deaza, but this one going Deaza's way. Swing a foul at the dish. It's twice the fun at Irving Oil every weekend through September 7th. Get double the pump up the fun game tickets for even more chances to win the Irving Oil $5 million summer giveaway. Visit a participating Irving Oil for details. Brock Holt, who led off with a single, now stands at second base with two outs here in the fifth inning. And a good at bat here for Diaz, who's hanging tough. Full count. Ball four, he walks in. So the first walk allowed by DeGrom in this outing. Well, this September, the Red Sox family four pack is back. 
in this special package fans will get four tickets four hot dogs and four sodas for seventy five dollars this great deal is even available for the Red Sox hat night on September 8th and Fred Lynn bobblehead night on September 22nd tickets are available at Red Sox dot com slash family four packs two outs two on and Joe Kelly the batter Kelly struck out swinging in the third inning one of nine strikeouts for DeGrom. Kelly trying to drop a bunt down. It is a good one, and DeGrom's throw will be just in time. Good fielding play by the Mets pitcher. Able to retire the Red Sox pitcher and end the inning. And by Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Now back in New York where we head into the bottom of the fifth inning at City Field with the Red Sox and Mets scoreless. Now don't miss W.B. Mason extra innings live right after the game. T.C. and Tim Wakefield to break down today's game and you'll hear from Joe Kelly. Whatever, whenever, wherever, who but W.B. Mason. Well, Joe Kelly had to throw 30 first inning pitches. He has settled into this outing a little more and has certainly been more economical as the day has worn on. And at a 1 2 3 fourth inning, now starts the fifth with 66 pitches to this point. Bottom third of the Mets order Michael Conforto, Wilmer Flores, and Jacob DeGrom scheduled to bat in the inning. Five in a row now retired by Joe Kelly. Wow, where's that pitch? Pretty good pitch by Joe Kelly, not called a strike. Tailing fastball on the inside part of the plate. Down and in, and Kelly now falls behind 3 0. Mookie bats well over into right center field. The Red Sox center field, gap out there in the left center right now. As they play for Conforto to pull here as he leads it off in the bottom of the fifth. And ahead, three and zero. Oh. Oh, 
Hot close and a leadoff walk. So now that's four times in five innings that the Mets have had the lead runner on. It's time for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Tom? Tom, thanks very much. Yeah, you've seen that in the NHL buildings across Canada, but you've seen it at the Rogers Center with Encarnacion, and boy, what an offensive attack the Blue Jays have. You add Troy Tulowitzki to that mix, Jerry, and it's pretty impressive. Well, right now, a game and a half lead over the Yankees. They've won nine in uh, the last uh, 11 games, they're nine and two in their last 11. 42 and 23 at home, playing great baseball. Pick up their 73rd win today. Yankees started the day, game and a half back of the Jays. And Fordo with a leadoff walk to begin things here in the fifth inning, held on to first base by Travis Shaw. And Flores grounds one by the mound slowly Holt a second for one on to first for two nicely done was not hit very hard as it turned out and the Red Sox easily turning that double play their second of the day very quick very quick here from Brock Holt the Zodanda Bogarts watch this the underhand flip well the shuffle pass I should say and then Bogarts really coming across that back that remember when I, I was talking about Bogarts going out toward right field and I felt like that was you know, really costing him some double plays at first base. He's really changed that. I mean, he's charging across that bag now. There was still a little bit of a step out toward the outfield, but not as drastic as it has been. Here's another good example right here, where he's just attacking the second base bag, and that's that's great. I mean, that makes him a big difference at first base. To left, Ayaza going back and over to make the catch on DeGrom to end things here in the fifth inning. We played five from City Field, still scoreless. Head to the top half of the sixth inning. It's time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Ness and Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Tweet your photos now. Brought to you by T-Mobile. 
Sixth inning, no score, and the top of the Red Sox order, Mookie Betts, leading it off, leading off an inning for the third time today. Grounded out to second base in the first inning, reached on an error, throwing error by Wilmer Flores, the shortstop in the fourth inning. Now here he is to begin things in the sixth inning. Nine strikeouts for DeGrom through the first five innings. He's walked one that came last inning when he walked Deaza. With a swing and a miss. Evens at two and two. At two one count, the last thing you're expecting on uh, is, is a change up, and that's exactly what Mookie Betts gets. Another change up. Hunter Grom, a Mets ninth round pick in 2010. Change up to the outside part of the plate right there and just off the end of the bat of Mookie Betts. Ron missing all of 2011, undergoing Tommy John surgery. Last year, first year in the bigs, 9 and 6. The 2.69 ERA is a line drive, base hit into left field for Mookie Betts, second Red Sox hit of the day. Is that two seam fastball right there running back in on Mookie Betts and he gets the barrel of the bat on it for the base hit good head discipline by Betts. The Red Sox have the lead off man on again here in the sixth inning. Third straight inning they've had the lead off man on they left Betts at second base in the fourth inning left Holt at second base in the fifth inning. No one has visited third yet for the Red Sox as is Pablo Sandoval's third try today. Struck out in the first, struck out in the fourth, and is down on the count 0 and 1. Oh and two. Well, that's been a that's been a sore spot right there for uh, Sandoval all day long. That fastball up and in. He struck him out twice on this identical pitch. Maybe a little bit higher, but that time no contact again on the ball inside. On two strikes here to Sandoval. Guessing game right there. Sandoval knows he's punched out twice on fastballs inside, so what does he do? He goes away with it. Bouncing in, taking off is Betts. The throw to second base will be late and it gets through, but it is backed up. So, again, aggressive base running here from the Red Sox with the ball in the dirt. Yeah, it's uh, just like Brock Holt. You know, they, they see the ball bounce and you can see Betts right there taking off right away. That's just very good base running. Every once in a while, you might get thrown out, but, uh, well, I'm going to say nine out of ten times you make it. <laughs> well, now Betts in scoring position at second base. Sandoval. It's this one towards the gap in right center field. This ball is going to get down. Back to the track is around from second base comes Betts. Sandoval into second base with an RBI double, and the Red Sox take a one nothing lead. So Sandoval, who looked bad on his first two at bat, striking out this time, doubles in the game's first run. I think this was a fastball. We'll get another look at it. And if it is, yes, it is the fastball. And again, they tried to go up and in on Sandoval, but this one stayed out over the plate. And Sandoval finds the gap in right center field. They were trying to strike him out the same way they did the first two at bats, but not that time. They left it out over the plate. 
And Sandoval with the RBI double. Now Xander Bogart's 0 for 2. And he'll drive it to center field. Cespedes started in, now goes back and makes the catch. Tagging at second is Sandoval. Throw from Cespedes will be cut off, and the throw to third is late. And Sandoval just gets in, tagging up and moving to third base. I didn't think that was even going to be close at third base. When uh, when Cespedes caught that in the outfield, it looked like you could walk to third base on this. And Sandoval's going hard the whole way, as you can see. Slowed up a little bit at the end. And he came closer than it should have been. Infield comes in for the Mets. All the way around up to the lip of the grass with one out. Sandoval at third and Shaw taking ball one downstairs. Shaw struck out looking in the second inning, struck out swinging in the fourth inning. Pitch count is rising for DeGrom. Next pitch will be the 100th of his outing. We had one out here in the sixth inning. Bounces away, but Sandoval's not going to try it. It goes all the way back to the backstop, and Sandoval never really made much of a move. Apparently he didn't read that right because that ball goes all the way back and that's an easy run right here. He just stopped almost immediately. And I think he knows he made a mistake right there. So he remains at third base a break there for the Mets. And it's now 3 and 0 to Shaw. And that's ball four. So the second walk given up by DeGrom with one out here in the inning. The one will stay with us at the end of the inning. As the third out of the inning, we'll have a special behind the scenes look at what happens here in between innings from City Field. And Morthen, the pitching coach, headed out there right now for the Mets. Rom here up over 100 pitches now working in the sixth inning. His pitching line is brought to you by your area Lexus dealers. Five and a third, three hits, one run. Came in this inning. Walk in nine strikeouts for DeGrom. In a first and third situation with Sandoval at third base. Shaw at first, one out. And Brock Holt coming up. In there for strike one. Inning started with Betts singling. Wild pitch got him to second base. Sandoval with the RBI double that scored Betts. Bogarts fly it out to center. Sandoval took third. Shaw walks first and third. Now a foul off to the left out of play, and DeGrom is ahead 0 and 2. For the first time for the Mets up in the pen, Erica Flaherty, left hander up. One of the many relievers we saw in the ball game last night for New York. Next training affair that the Red Sox ended up winning six to four in game one. Holt on the ground to first, going to second for one, back to first. It'll be late and a run will score. Well, the first baseman Murphy taking a peek at the plate as Sandoval scores, and the Red Sox are able to take a 2 0 lead. At first, I thought Murphy was going to be able to catch that ball in the air. He just missed doing it, and he scoops and throws to second base. Holt hustling down the line, beats it at first. Red Sox pick up another run, make it a 2 0 ball game. But at first, I thought that Murphy had a chance to catch that ball in the air, but he did not. The Red Sox pick up the run. 
Now Blake Swihart, who has struck out twice today. Soft toss to first and hold back to the bag. There's one more look at Murphy, and it was very close, but clearly hitting the grass first. Takes a look toward third base and toward home, but uh, nothing happening there for him. And just goes to second base to get the out. Swihart on the ground up the middle, and that'll find its way into center field. Holt heading for third, and will get there without a problem. So the Red Sox now with a total of three hits in the inning have runners at first and third. It happens all the time, doesn't it, Don? You, know, you strike out a couple of times in the game, your first two at bats, and what do you do to the next at bat? You swing early. Fastball that's going to be down. It's toward the end of the bat, but it makes its way up the middle. And some first and third action for the Red Sox with the two outs. Holtz at third, Swihart at first with two down, and it brings up Jackie Bradley Jr. Travis Darno, the catcher, reeling off the signs. This will be a double steal possibility. A swing and a miss for strike one. Bradley, the seventh member of the Red Sox to bat here in the sixth inning. They've scored twice to break a scoreless tie here in the sixth inning. Foul tip 0 and 2. Now the double steal becomes more of a possibility with two strikes on Jackie Bradley. You need speed at third base, which you have and hold. You don't need it at first base. Bradley strikes out on the high fastball, but the Red Sox score a pair of runs and take a 2-0 lead. Don't go anywhere. Let's stay in the park. New York as we stayed inside the park as Joe Kelly got ready 
As did the Red Sox defensively. They now enjoy a 2 nothing advantage with the Mets coming to bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Joe Kelly's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Five innings, three hits, no runs. He has walked two, struck out two. At a 30 pitch first inning that he got through unscathed. When you see how hard he had to work early, he's been far more economical, right down to an eight pitch fifth inning. And here's pitch 75 as he opens up the sixth inning with Curtis Granderson leading it off and taking strike one. Granderson, who doubled in the first inning, singled in the third, has two of the three Mets hits on the day. Low one and two. Joe Kelly, who's one of his last five straight starts, comes in at seven and six with a 5.18 earned run average. Had been ahead 0 and 2. Anderson has been a problem for Joe Kelly so far today. Jams him and it's fouled back. Well, hey, Red Sox Nation, start earning rewards for every dunk and run. Enroll any DD card online at ddperch.com. The Red Sox run on Duncan. 2 2 pitch. And Granderson sends it to left field, sending Deaza back a few steps. For the first out of the bottom of the sixth inning. Now Joe Kelly's been very good this afternoon. Not a big strikeout day. He did have two in the first inning and both coming on changeups. It's Murphy right there. Got Kelly Johnson on a changeup and two double plays have really helped out. Brock Holt tagging second and throwing the first and then Holt to Bogarts to shore at first base for this uh, double play to the, in the fifth inning. One down in the sixth for Jonas Cespedes, who has fly to right and grounded into one of those double plays. And take strike one. The Sox have turned two double plays today. Five straight wins Tampa Bay, Detroit, Seattle, Cleveland, and Chicago all on the list for Joe Kelly in this five game winning streak. Action in the pen. Hansel Robles up now for the Mets. As the starter, Jacob DeGrom, 109 pitches through the first six innings. Foul to our right, and it's two and two. Last time out for Joe Kelly, that was at Chicago as part of this road trip. Where she won his fifth straight start, but threw 103 pitches and tied his career high, which was seven and a third. This guy that has, for whatever reason, not been able to go deeper than seven and a third in a game in his career, whether it be in St. Louis or with the Red Sox. Rounded back towards Kelly. He's got it. And Granderson retired for the first time today. Actually, you should say Cespedes retired for the first time today. Two down. On well, tomorrow at 11 30 on an all new episode of Nesson Clubhouse, Steve Lyons teaches the art of the crow hop. Find out who makes rain delay decisions at Fenway Park. And Rick Porcello makes his debut on Red Sox Small Talk. It's Nesson Clubhouse, and it's presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. Two down here in the sixth inning, and it brings up Daniel Murphy. Murphy struck out swinging in the first inning, flied out to left in the third.
broken bat fly ball to right Bradley Jr. is there to make the catch that ends the sixth inning. So another one two three inning for Joe Kelly a two nothing Boston lead. Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Some of the fare here is City Field in New York as the Red Sox have a 2 0 advantage over the Mets. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by Kia after six innings from Jacob DeGrom, who leaves on the hook. Giving up only four hits and the two runs that he allowed. So Robles into the game, 44th appearance, three and two with a 3.67 ERA, 44 strikeouts to 15 walks, and opponents hitting under 200 against Robles at 195. This guy actually was a starting pitcher and converted to a reliever back in 2014. Well, he will deal with eight, nine, and one for the Red Sox and. Alejandro de Aza leading it off here in the top of the seventh inning. Rounded out to first in the third, walked in the fifth inning. Joe Kelly indeed on deck. He's only thrown 87 pitches through the first six innings, so going to continue on. Now he's come up huge today because the Red Sox bullpen obviously used heavy last night. It's not pitching well. Kelly going deep into the game today, and just what uh, the Red Sox needed. That 30 pitch first inning didn't look like he was going to be able to do what he has done here today. I think he was going to be in there a long time anyway, Don, regardless of what had happened today. And Kelly on deck, and then it'll be Betts here in the seventh as a pop up and foul ground. Darno, the catcher, by the on deck circle, cannot make the catch. It's like he had a little more room perhaps leaning there and unable to get it. Hey, he got awfully uncomfortable once he got to that on deck circle. He wasn't quite sure where he was. Takes the helmet off, flips it away, and then as he touches the dirt, that's when he starts to really be unsure of how much room he has. Probably had another step. Gives Deaza another chance and a swing and a miss there ends up striking out. That's 11 strikeouts now for Mets pitching the first for Robles. Mm -hmm. 
looked like the Azza was ready for the pitch. Kind of quick pitch, don't you think? Well, the Azza didn't have time, you know, time to call timeout, and it looks like it was not ready for that last pitch. One down, this one bounced in the dirt to Joe Kelly for ball one. To Grom in this game, six innings, four hits, two runs. He walked two and struck out ten, but he's on the hook. Came in at 12 and six into today's game. Time not called and a strike called as Kelly was backing out of the box without permission. <laughs> now he's down one and two. I don't know where Kelly was going. Do you have any idea? No. <laughs> I think he forgot to call timeout. I think he was in the process of trying to do so and yeah, then just kept it going. It just didn't happen. Strike three. Back to back case for Robles. 12 for the Mets on the day. Two down. Well, you don't often see pitchers complain about strikes, but Joe Kelly complained about that last when he thought it was too low. Do you find it odd that Joe Kelly wears glasses to pitch but not to hit? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Joe Kelly's a good athlete. Very good athlete. Very good athlete. Skateboarder when he was a teenager. Could have gone professional at that. Two down in the seventh inning. Yeah, Betts will take a strike. Mookie today has grounded out his second reach on a throwing error by their shortstop Wilmer Flores in the fourth and singled and scored in the sixth inning. Now a foul off to the right out of play. In the air to left field, back goes Conforto back towards the wall. That ball is going to be gone. A home run above the wall, and around will come Mookie Betts on the home run. His 12th home run of the year, and it puts the Red Sox on top, three to nothing. They got that uh, black wall back there that used to be the wall here when City Field first opened. It went off that above the new fencing, and a home run for Betts gives the Red Sox a three nothing lead. Let's take another look. Mookie bets with more of a line drive this time and does it go off? Yes, it does. We've had a couple of those in this series. Uh, that one more obvious than the one last night by Swihart. Mookie had actually stopped at second base and they let him know, hey, it's a home run. So he continued on to score. Two down for Pablo Sandoval, who doubled his last time up. Oh, foul tip for strike one. Well, for every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, All Town will donate $500 to Boston Children's Hospital. All Town is New England's premier healthier convenience retailer. There's a pop up foul towards the seats as Uribe gives chase. And the ball struck out in the first, struck out in the fourth before that double last time up, and all that was against DeGrom. Now a pop up left side of the Mets infield, Wilmer Flores. He'll make the catch. It ends the top of the seventh inning. Red Sox out a run on the home run by Mookie Betts. It's 3 0 Boston.
Sheridan Auto Service. Thank you, New England, for 60 great years. Your local Subaru dealers. And by Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. Now it's on here to the bottom of the seventh inning. Three to nothing. The Red Sox have the lead as Joe Kelly. Fourth consecutive start that he has pitched six plus innings as he works here into the seventh. And has retired the last five in a row. He'll be dealing with four, five, and six for New York here in the seventh. Darno, Johnson, and Uribe. The Mets catcher has walked and fly to right. Ball at 97, still throwing hard. Late swing and it's fouled off into the seats to the right. Well, tomorrow at 5:30, tune in to the Ultimate Red Sox Show, presented by Triple A. Look back at the best moments of the week that was in Red Sox baseball. Tune in tomorrow night at 5:30. It's right here on Nesson. 0-2 pitch. Darno grounds it softly down the third baseline. Sandoval charging in, throws on the run and in time. Well, Pablo makes that play pretty well coming in, and he's got a strong arm. It seems like the one that gives him the most problem the plays to his right. Going to his left, he's very strong, charging the ball pretty good. He's playing very deep right here, gets that in between hop and able to make the, the throw on the run the first base to get the first out of the inning. And one out in the seventh inning for Kelly Johnson. 0 for 2. He is struck out swinging, grounded out to short. And he takes strike one. Best opportunities in this game for New York came early. They left first and third in the first inning. There's a liner into left. And Diaz over to play it. Johnson will take a wide turn, but hold on with a one out base hit. Breaks up a string of six in a row, retired by Joe Kelly. Looks like the changeup again to Johnson. He struck him out on a changeup back in the first inning, but this one stays up a little bit. It is away, but that's good hitting by Kelly Johnson. And trying to pull the ball, takes it where the pitch was to the opposite field. One out, one on. Juan Uribe. One for two afternoon so far. He singled in the second inning. Jumping on that first pitch, and he fouls it back to the screen. Line towards left center, and that's going to get down and be trouble. Into the alley. Johnson is coming around from first base. He will score on a double by Juan Uribe. The Mets are on the board. Well, Uribe with two hits on the day now. A single on a breaking ball back in the second inning. A double now on the fastball. Uribe picking up his 36th RBI of the season. That's good hitting too. That ball was down and in. Not a bad pitch at all by Kelly, but cleaned out by Uribe. Uribe. Carl Willis on the phone as Joe Kelly has given up back-to-back -back hits and a run after getting the first out of the inning. Michael Conforto has grounded out a second and walked. Strike one. Mm -hmm. 
On the ground right side Brock Holt to his left. With the second out of the inning with the grounder to the right side your rebate takes third now with two away. Red Sox have action in the pen Tommy Lane is just up. As Joe Kelly tries to work his way through the seventh inning he is allowed to run in this inning and. That's have your at third base and Wilmer Flores coming up. Grounded to second base twice last time into a 4 6 3 double play. On the ground, left side. Sandoval dives, gets himself up, and the throw is in time. Nice play by Pablo Sandoval. Mets get on the board with a run. Red Sox have a 3 1 lead. Now Sandoval we talked about going to his left which is pretty decent and a very good play here saves a run going into the dive quickly back on his feet gets a huge out there for Kelly and the Red Sox. Now a double switch here for the Mets as Kadire takes over in left field we saw Michael Kadire play at first base in last night's game. Marco Flaherty, the new pitcher, into the ball game. Saw Flaherty pitch in last night's game. Eleventh appearance of the year without a record, a 15.00 ERA. Opponent sitting at 419 against O'Flaherty, and a pitch in there for a strike that evens it count at one and one. Xander Bogarts, Travis Shaw, Brock Holt scheduled to bat in the inning. As now a flare to take over for Robles. As the pitch will miss outside. Oh, 
Robles ended up going an inning, giving up a hit and a run. Didn't walk anybody and struck out two. So Mets pitching with 12 strikeouts in this game. And a count of two and two to Xander Bogarts. Well, Bartolo Colon warming in the pen right now, the former Red Sox right hander. And a swing and a miss and striking out is Xander Bogarts. That's 13 strikeouts today for the Mets. Well, a lot of strikeouts uh, for the Red Sox today, but still have the lead in this ball game. Looks like a breaking ball right here that uh, they go to to get Bogarts. A ball actually bouncing in the dirt. One down here in the eighth inning, and it brings up Travis Shaw. Struck out looking in the second, swinging in the fourth. He walked in the sixth inning. Fly ball to center. Cespedes turning and heading back, but it's going to be over his head and one hop the wall. Plays it cleanly and fires it back in, but not before Shaw stands at second base with a one out double. Now Shaw had been one for his last 17 before this double. This ball hit very well over the head of Cespedes. Lefty against lefty makes good solid contact, and Cespedes one step in and then no chance to get the ball over his head. One out runner at second base and Brock Holt standing in. Holt today striking out in the second inning, singling in the fifth, reaching on a fielder's choice in the sixth inning. Field straight away with Shaw at second base. Red Sox trying to end their lead on top by two and a ground ball right side. Johnson throws out Holt, but with the grounder to the right side, Shaw takes third base. Well, stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Uno's. TC and Tim Wakefield will preview Wade Miley's matchup against Noah Syndergaard going tomorrow for the Mets. Red Sox dealing with some very good pitching for the Mets, and we just saw. Moments ago, that uh, Bartolo Colon was warming in the Mets pen. He was on a side day, and they said he'd be available out there with all the work that the Mets pen got last night. If they needed an inning from Colon, they would go to him. So that's why he's up in the pen, available today for Terry Collins. Two down here in the eighth inning, and it brings up Swihart. Uh, played back to back extra inning games, of course, here last night, and then a 13 inning affair that they won in Philadelphia. Two and oh to Swihart. Striking out in the second, striking out in the fifth, and singling in the sixth inning. Yeah. 
And there's ball four. Down to first base goes Swigart. So the Red Sox now have runners at first and third with two down. Well, tonight after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today, Gary Streisky and Nikki Reyes will break down the Patriots roster as September 1st cut deadline approaches. That's tonight on Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do. First and third, two down, and it brings up Jackie Bradley Jr. Bradley has grounded out to first, struck out in the fifth, struck out in the sixth. Already falling behind here, two and zero. And Worthen, the pitching coach, headed out there again. MLB.tv Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD and over 400 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv for details. Two down here in the eighth inning. With Shaw at third and Swihart at first. Red Sox holding on to a 3 1 lead. There's a strike to Bradley, and kind of a mock cheer goes up here at City Field. Sox with two in the sixth inning, one in the seventh. While well, the Mets answer with a run of their own in the bottom of the seventh, and Red Sox back to work here in the eighth. And Bradley Jr. taking strike two. That's pretty nasty pitch right there. Fastball down in the strike zone to uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. Down and away. The first and back is Swihart. On the ground, foul towards the end of the Mets dugout. Well, tomorrow at noon, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph the Boot, available at Men's Warehouse. TC and Tim Wakefield will analyze the AL playoff races. It's tomorrow at noon, and it's right here on Nesson. Runner goes at first at Swyard, and the pitch misses inside. Uh, Swyard will take second base. And no throw at all that time uh, by Darno, not taking the chance of the possible double steal with the man at third base. They were going to throw through it looked like because the shortstop was uh, there to cover but uh, Dono felt like he had no chance to get him. Striking out is Bradley got away briefly from the catcher and Darno throws him out at first base to end the inning the Red Sox strand a pair.
double on a high fastball into the gap to get the first run home for the Red Sox. The second one coming on a force out at second base off the bat of Brock Holt. And the third run coming on a Moogie Betts line drive home run that goes off the back wall in left field. That's how the Red Sox got their three. Three to one, Red Sox have the lead here over the Mets. And a ground ball foul. Today's game summary brought to you by Xfinity. Joe Kelly, seven plus innings now as he works here in the eighth. And a pitch that is going to miss. Five hits, earned run, two walks, two Ks. Bats two for four with a home run in this game. DeGrom on the hook. Ten strikeouts, six innings, but he did give up two runs. Michael Kadire had taken over in left field, bats in this spot, and leads it off here in the bottom of the eighth. Ground ball up the middle, ranging as Bogart spins and fires and gets it there in time. Nice play by Xander Bogarts. Now Bogart showing great athletic ability here as he ranges to his uh, left to make that play spin around and make that throw to first base to pick up the out. Look how far he's playing over there and how far he's going to go to get to this ball. Man, control his body to make that spin and throw. So Joe Kelly, who is equaling his career high again at seven and a third, will depart the pitching change from City Field. Red Sox holding on to a 3 1 lead. Well, don't miss the excitement of the Bruins and Celtics this season. Single game suites are on sale now, accommodating 18 to 60 fans. Suites are the ideal spot to watch the game of the group and feature a private bathroom, catering options, and more. For additional info, visit tdgarden.com slash suite rentals or call 617-624-1847. One out of the inning, and Tommy Lane working here to Curtis Granderson. And a ground ball foul. Well, Tommy Lane first out of the pen here for the Red Sox comes in in the eighth inning after a good long outing today from Joe Kelly his 50th appearance career high for Lane one and one with a 4.20 ERA 40 strikeouts to 20 walks and opponent sitting at 250 against Lane as Granderson broke his bat he goes to get a new one.
Strike called over the inside corner, and there's the first strikeout for Lane. And there are two outs here in the eighth. And Tommy Lane going to the breaking ball to get Granison big out in this ball game. Foot right directly at him, and it picks up the inside corner. It's one that Granison kind of quits on because he thinks it's going to be inside. Two down here in the eighth, and it brings up Ioannis Cespedes. He has flied to right, grounded into a double play, and grounded back to the mound. In there for strike one. So Joe Kelly today, seven and a third, five hits, so one run. He walked two, struck out two. And a chance for his sixth straight win. Came in individually at seven and six and having won the last five straight. Told you a big crowd here today. Ended up being 43,255 for the sellout this season. Second largest regular season crowd ever behind the opening day of this season, 43,947. Cespedes here with a full count. Fly to right, grounded into a double play, and tap one back to the mound. Ball four, and a two out walk here, allowed by Lane. Now for every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings where the Sox get a save, CVS Pharmacy will make a donation. Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 commitment once again this season. CVS Pharmacy, the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Time run coming to the plate here. Pacing in the dugout is Joe Kelly. Fouled off, and it's a ball and a strike. Lane coming in on him. Familia getting ready in the pen. We saw him work in last night's game. There's a little pop up sending Bogart to the outfield lawn to make the catch that will end the eighth inning. So the Red Sox take a 3 1 lead to the ninth.
to the top half of the ninth inning. And tomorrow, 12:30. Don't miss Red Sox game day live, presented by DCU. TC and Tim Wakefield will preview Wade Miley's start against the Mets. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Now it is on to inning number nine and former Red Sox right-hander Bartolo Colon in his first relief appearance since 2011. Because of all the work the bullpen has had, this was his side day. And they said he was available, and here he is as he first deals with Alejandro De Aza, who has grounded out, walked, and struck out. 25 starts, 11 and 11 this year is Cologne, the 4.68 earned run average, 114 Ks. An amazing turn to his career. When he left Boston, he had to wonder whether or not he was done. But he has gone on to have a very successful major league career and doing so again this year with the Mets. Seems like this guy has been pitching since, uh, <laughs> you know, the early 1900s. Strike three call. Deaza hates it and it takes with him the first strikeout for Cologne. And that's what he lives on. I mean, he lives on a fastball, a two-seam fastball that he throws almost all the time. And here he throws it inside, comes back. To pick up the inside corner. Well, David Ortiz going to pinch it here against Colon. Last strikeout is the 15th of the day for the Mets. David Ortiz pinch hitting here in the ninth. And David drives it out to a deep center field. Cespedes is going back onto the track at the wall. It is going to be not caught. Dropped out there and heading to second base and safe at second is Ortiz. Oh my. We'll see if they're going to challenge this. It was Uribe, the third baseman, who was covering at second. And if he did get in, he barely got in. Well, the reason Ortiz didn't start the game today is because of a bad heel, right? Correct. And I can tell you this. He wasn't running very well in a second base right here as he just slows up. Doesn't slide. And makes that place close. Collins waiting in that dugout to make sure uh, that Ortiz was out. And if, they, if he thinks he was out, he's going to make the challenge. Never mind. He's not going to do it. No challenge. Yeah, I don't think he got him until he got on the bag. Looked like he missed with the first tag. Pinch runner here, Ortiz with a double with one out in the ninth inning. Rusne Castillo runs at second base. Red Sox looking to grab a little more insurance here as they bat in the ninth with one out. And Mookie Betts takes strike one. That says grounded out, reached on an error, single to left, and last time up, Homer. Now it's a left field, his 12th home run of the year, and his 60th RBI. Kind of a strange place for Cologne here, relieving for the first time since 2011. But he gets the strike, and that is strike three for the second out. The play of the game right there, the home run by Mookie Betts. It's the Toyota play of the game.
16 strikeouts today for Mets pitching. Pablo Sandoval the batter. And a foul off to the left. Jacob DeGrom struck out 10. Robles struck out 2. O'Flaherty 2. And so far, Cologne 2. But it's the Red Sox who have a 3 1 lead. One two. And Cologne's still with a 92 mile an hour fastball. That's the cross seam fastball. He throws two times the cross seam or the two seam. Very few breaking balls. Close pitch. Tried that two seamer again, tried to bring it back to the inside corner, but too low. Rotation on the baseball brings it back, but uh, not enough that time. On the ground, it picks spryly off the mound by Cologne, and he fires to first for the out. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Red Sox on top, three to one. To the bottom of the ninth inning. Bob's discount furniture goes to bat for the Jimmy Fund again this year. Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's discount furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybobs.com. So it's on to the bottom of the ninth inning, and it's Gene Machi into the game. His 13th appearance in a Red Sox uniform without a record of 5.91 earned run average. Two for two and save opportunities so far. Eight strikeouts, four walks, and opponents hitting at 214 against Machi. Tommy Lane had gone two thirds of an inning in relief of Joe Kelly. And now it's Machi trying to finish it off. Now this Starno leading it off and taking ball one. Walked in the first, fly to right in the fourth, and grounded out to third base in the seventh. Fly ball down the right field line that will make its way foul.
back to the mound. Machi has got it. He'll flip underhanded for the first out of the ninth inning. So able to get Darno for the first out. And it'll bring up Kelly Johnson. Johnson has struck out, grounded out, and singled. Came around to score the only Mets run back in the seventh inning. Driven in on the double by Juan Uribe. Waits on deck right now for the Mets. A high strike call, and it's one and one. Machi working here last night going an inning and a third with a strikeout. Stranded the bases loaded in the seventh, got to Hata to fly out. Now jumps ahead of Johnson. Sorry, Don, that's a great split thinking fastball right there by Machi. That one really dropped about almost a foot. Machi with four saves in his major league career, two coming with the Red Sox. Mentioned two for two in the save opportunities with the Red Sox this season. Able to get saves against Tampa Bay and the White Sox. Red Sox getting the Chi off waivers from San Francisco. Is 2 2. On the ground, down the first baseline. It is a fair ball, and it's out number two of the ninth. Travis Shaw handling business down there. Two away. Here's that splitter again. Not as much dipping at this time, but enough to induce the ground ball. That one moving more away from Kelly Johnson. Two down in the ninth, and it brings up Juan Uribe. He's had a two hit day, a single to right, a double to center, picking up an RBI. As he looks at strike one, credit for that outside corner. Well, a well pitched ball game today by the Red Sox, and it starts with Joe Kelly, who went seven and a third, tying his career long in an outing. Five hits the one run worked out of a 30 pitch first inning and did not allow a run in that first inning. So Tommy Lane for two thirds and now Gene Machi on a ground ball to shortstop Bogarts to his left and the Red Sox win the ball game. A tight one and a fun ball game today from City Field as the Red Sox take the first two of this three game series. Now one two three ninth inning.